Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. We are recording this podcast Thursday, or excuse me, Wednesday morning, July 3rd. And the latest on Barrel, Barrel now, we're still a Category 4 hurricane moving toward Jamaica. It's 125 miles southeast of Jamaica currently, expected to make landfall on Jamaica sometime later today, whether the eye will actually go over Kingston or anywhere around Jamaica still remains to be seen. It could move just slightly south of Jamaica. Could make a difference in how much barrel weakens as it crosses through Jamaica, but they will definitely be experiencing major hurricane force winds later today. And then we also have a hurricane warning in effect for the Cayman Islands. Also, a tropical storm warning remains in effect for the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Some of those um, squalls still moving over that area. And then after it gets through with Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, it moves out in the Caribbean, Jeff, where it starts to fight some wind shear. And so it loses its major hurricane status down to a category two is what it's forecast to be right now when it makes landfall again for the third time on the Yucatan Peninsula. Yucatan Peninsula has a hurricane watch in effect right now and just south of there, Belize, that yellow area, very small yellow area, that's a tropical storm watch for that area. It tracks across the Yucatan Friday afternoon, making it was making its way into the Gulf of Mexico by Saturday morning as a tropical storm. And then by early Sunday morning, 2 a.m., you see that H right there. Merrill is expected to be a minimal hurricane, Category 1 hurricane, just barely right around 75 miles per hour. And then right now, this forecast track taking it inland just south of Brownsville, 2 a.m. Monday morning. So again, Jeff, we continue to see things change, but not drastically with the track or strength guidance. What are you seeing this morning? Yeah, so, you know, there's been a lot of conjecture, if you will, over the last 24 hours about yeah. barrel, its, tra its track, you know, what it's doing. And, and you could see here this morning, this is, yes, it is still a powerful hurricane. Yes, there's going to be significant impacts on the island of Jamaica, um, but this is this is not um, the the same organizational level of the hurricane that we saw a couple of days ago. You can see the 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 cloud pattern here is tilted to the to the south to the northeast from the southwest to the northeast. Uh, Barrel still holding on though with that inner core. The inner core has not been really disrupted as much as maybe we were thinking with the shear. But it's still early, and so the shear is, is still having an impact on it. And, and what's interesting about this is this is shear really being caused by the fast forward motion of the hurricane. So the hurricane is moving quickly to the west, and aloft, the upper level winds are relatively weak. And so the, the fast forward motion is actually creating the shear on this hurricane. So if you think of your car and you leave a cup on top of your car, your car starts moving, but the cup isn't really moving. And so it kind of starts to blow off the top of the hurricane and that's what we're seeing thus far though the, the hurricane has done very well uh in the face of this year and been able to hold on but the pressures come up we've seen the pressure come up from the 930s yesterday morning now into the low 950s this morning so it is weakening and the big question going forward here you know what what does the mountainous train of jamaica do to this it, it certainly looks like the at least the northern eye wall is gonna is going to impact jamaica so it's going to be a bad day in jamaica um, yeah. How much is that? And then we still have upper level uh, shear as it goes toward the Yucatan Peninsula. And so there, there's room here for some additional weakening. And, and if we can get in there and kind of break down that inner core, it may be a little bit more rapid than what we've seen thus far. So um, I don't think, you know, the, the weakening and the intensity forecasts have been a little bit off here, but I don't think they're dramatically off. And I don't think this results in any significant major changes down the road with the track freezing. Now, once we get in the Gulf of Mexico, we're starting to see a little bit of a difference. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, here in a minute. And, and not to disregard the, the events that are going on over here in, in the, the portions of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. This is incredibly heavy rain in this feeder band. So this is very mountainous terrain here. Um, they could be definitely seeing some flash flooding and mudslides um, back well over here to the northeast. And so this is going to be important as we go forward. Here's the center of the hurricane way down here. 
impacts are going to extend well out from the center. So that's important to understand as we start getting into the Gulf of Mexico late, late, later this weekend, that impacts are going to extend out well from the center of this hurricane and, and be far reaching. Yeah, just a, just a reminder that uh, don't pay attention to the cone as far as hurricane impacts. Hurricane impacts can be outside of the cone, and that's a great example of Haiti and Dominican getting training storms really uh, for the last uh, couple of days. So now we'll take a look at the tracks. So fairly fairly confident here in the track through, through the Yucatan, and then now starting to get some confidence here in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, this is the multi-model ensemble. So you have the European, the UK, Matt, the GFS, and the Canadian, and their ensemble members. So this is, uh, you know, a pretty good sampling of the guidance. And, and you can see here this, this turn to the west-northwest here in the southern Gulf of Mexico. Yes, there's still some questions this morning, but we're starting to be able to answer some of these questions a little bit better. You know, where exactly Barrel comes off the Yucatan? It does look like it's going to come off the Yucatan somewhere in this area. Um, kind of the middle or northern portion of the Yucatan, um, maybe around Meridian, and then move west-northwest, um, possibly northwest here at the end. Um, but a lot of this here in the Gulf of Mexico is going to be guided by the intensity of the storm. So a stronger storm, um, you know, not being disrupted as much over the Yucatan and or potentially finding favorable conditions now in the Gulf of Mexico and restrengthening is going to tend to track a little bit more to the right. So possibly up towards the South Texas coast, maybe even a little bit further up the, the South Texas coast. Um, a weaker storm is going to end up tracking a little bit more here to the left or the west. And, and the, the UK Met and the uh, European guidance has continued to be very consistent in that this is, is going to be a weaker storm and track further to the south, while the GFS and the Canadian have been more insistent that it's going to be a little bit stronger and track a little bit more to the north. And, you know, you can see here the upper Texas coast is kind of even now getting on the edge of the ensemble guidance. Yep. So some of the members still bring it up here. But the, the trend here is really starting to focus in here now on south Texas and northern Mexico. It's not all about the intensity. Intensity is definitely going to be a factor in the Gulf with track. But it's also about the position and strength of a trough over the central United States. And we'll talk about that in just a second. One thing I did want to show is the consensus tracks here. This was over the past 24 hours. And so for all of the concern of things shifting to the north, you can actually see on the consensus of the models, uh, the trend has been a little bit to the south. But there hasn't just really, there hasn't been a huge change here in the southern and western Gulf of Mexico. So you can see we're still talking south Texas, northern Mexico. So roughly Kingsville kind of on the north side of this envelope and then down here into northern Mexico on the south side of the envelope. And so there hasn't been these big changes. It, 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 it almost seems like there's been big changes and there really hasn't, especially with the track reasoning here, um, kind of narrowing in on this area. Could there still be impact or could there still be the potential for it to come a little bit further north? Yes, that potential is on the table. Um, but it's it's starting to get more and more increasingly likely this is going to be uh, northern Mexico and South Texas, but like we just said, impacts extend well away from the center of the storm. So this would be the center potentially of the storm as it comes up to the west northwest or the northwest. <clears throat> yep, that has been consistent. Yeah. So we'll take a look now at at the what we've been showing the last couple of days, the differences in the the GFS and the European. So this is this morning, our big ridge of high pressure still sitting here over the, the southeast United States. You know, a couple days ago, this was located here over northern Louisiana, and the core of this has now shifted over Alabama um, in the southeast United States, but still ridging back into Texas. Here's our trough across the northern plains. So this trough is being sampled by our upper air network in the United States. Um, so we, we have a good idea of, of how this is playing out up here and, and what's going to happen here over the next uh, two to three days is this trough is going to swing into the Midwest and Great Lakes and it's going to bump this ridge back down here to the southeast and that will create a weakness, what we call a weakness or a break between the subtropical ridge here and this one over here in the southeast here over the southern plains in Texas and potentially that opens a door for barrel, depending on where it is and how strong it is in the Gulf of Mexico, to fill this trough, tropical systems like to turn towards troughs and they go around ridges. And so if this ridge stayed in place and didn't move, barrel would move west into Mexico, no issue. But since this ridge is going to get out of the way, 
Um, and you can see this here. This is uh, Sunday morning around sunrise. You can see our ridge completely breaks down and weakens, centered over here near Florida. We still have the big high pressure ridge over California. <clears throat> but in the middle here, we have this break over the Southern Plains in Texas with a trough here over the Northern Plains in Midwest. And you can see that trough kind of dipping down here into Oklahoma and Texas. But the first thing, the first thing you notice is Beryl is a formidable system here on the GFS and further north. And so this strong of a tropical system would certainly feel this trough and is going to be turning more to the northwest, if not even the north northwest. Um, but it's starting to get kind of late in the game here. So it's getting up close to the coast. And so if it's making a turn now, it's, it's kind of doing it late in the game. And even still here, this would probably be the most, the majority of the impacts down here on the southern Texas coast. So this is the GFS and, and the upper air pattern, the steering pattern, if you will, for Sunday morning. And then if you look at the uh, European, um, this is Monday morning at around sunrise. You can see very similar setup, but the trough is not quite as deep. Barrel is much weaker and it's much further south. So it doesn't necessarily feel the pull or the tug of this trough as much and barrel ends up going more west northwest into northern Mexico and this is mostly a function of uh, barrel is a weaker shallower system that's being pushed along more by the low level trade wind flow versus being steered more by the by the mid and upper levels in the trough and so there's still this wait and see type game or how the intensity plays out here in the Gulf of Mexico what I kind of am starting to get a maybe a feeling is going to happen is it's going to come off as a tropical storm, move more to the west northwest in that weak phase, and then potentially as it strengthens, start to turn more toward the northwest or even the north northwest. But it's going to be running out of time. So the question is, if it gets further uh, over here to the west and then starts to make that turn, it still ends up in northern Mexico or potentially south Texas. So. We're not completely out of the woods in Southeast Texas. We're certainly not gonna be out of the woods for potential impacts. We're gonna start having to look at increasing swells, potential for increasing tides. We're just gonna to have to see how high potentially the tides will go. Is it gonna to get to impactful levels early next week? We'll just have to see. Um, and then we're probably going to start to see some showers and stuff like that with some squalls potentially up even on the upper Texas coast. <clears throat> If you're you headed to the beach, obviously, you know, South Padre, any of those areas, especially, uh, be mindful of rip currents. Uh, not not a good time to be in the water. Yeah, and that's anywhere along the Gulf Coast. As we get right. into Saturday and especially Sunday when barrels out in the Gulf, yeah. um, you know, we're talking Florida, west coast of Florida, all on the U.S. Gulf Coast. These big swells are going to be coming up. And it's probably even more impactful, you know, in states where the weather's nice because people are at the beach. And so you got to be you got to be careful uh, with those rip currents um, and big swells that come up to the coast. So you can see here on the intensity guidance, a continued downward trend. Here's the impact on the Yucatan, the sharp drop. Um, interestingly enough, we are seeing a slightly better increase now in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and we have a, a handful of guidance members that keep this. A little bit stronger. These these guidance members are the ones that kind of clip the Yucatan um, and don't weaken it as much. Um, so yes, the the potential is there. The Hurricane Center bumping it back up to a hurricane could it go higher? Could it go a little bit higher? Yeah, it could. And so we'll have to pay attention to this. And I think the the reliance on shear forecast four and five days down the road is is kind of you know uncertain. And so we're starting to see a better upper air environment in the Gulf of Mexico that potentially allows this to re-strengthen a little bit more than we were initially thinking yesterday. So uh, <clears throat> it's just something we're going to have to keep a really close eye on in this in this time frame here. And lastly, this is the wind probabilities and the most likely time of arrival of tropical storm force winds. So that's 40 mile per hour winds. And so as we mentioned yesterday, down here, South Texas, South Padre, Brownsville, Port Isabel, um, you're now up to a, you know, 20 to 30, coming up to a 30% chance of sustained 40 mile per hour winds as we get into Sunday morning. So this would be the most likely time that you start seeing those 40 mile per hour winds. And we can we, we see this now extending up toward the mid Texas coast a little bit here. This will probably be more in squalls than actually sustained winds with the tropical system. But this is, this is something to be paying attention to down on 
on the lower Texas coast. If, if you're down there south of Kingsville, kind of all the way down to the to the valley, you need to be paying attention to this and you need to have your hurricane plans and hurricane kits in place. Touching somewhere around Matagorda, Matagorda Bay and southward from there. So good stuff, Jeff. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Of course, click on and subscribe to our Weather Insights YouTube channel to get the latest on the tropics. And be sure to join us for the next Weather Insights podcast.